glad to be back with you. And I've got what I hope is an interesting problem in statics today. I was thinking about this last night. What if you had a beam? Okay, and we're going to assume that the, the weight of the beam is negligible. It weigh, weighs something, but it's low enough we don't really care. We could ignore it and still get about the right answer. And it's pinned at the left end, and I'll call that point A. And let's say there's a big weight hanging from the middle of it. Okay, that's 1,000 newtons, and I'll call this point B. All right, now, right now, obviously this beam is going to fall, right? The, 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 the forces and the moments are not balanced, so there's going to be an acceleration. Well, you know, the obvious thing to do is to put a force up on the other end, but what if we don't do that? What if at point C here, we have a big moment, okay? Moment, but no force, all right? That would be like if I had a, at that, at, at point C here, I had a big force that way and a big force that way that gave me a moment. All right? The forces cancel out, but there's a net moment. That's what that is. Okay? Well, what would that be like? Would it be possible to make this beam stay horizontal just with that moment? Well, I don't know. Let's try it. Um, so remember, given, find, solution, answer. That's the format we're going to use. So this is the given. Okay, this is all the information we've got. I guess I better give you some uh, dimensions here. That's 500 millimeters, half a meter, and so is that. All right, so that's all the dimensions. It turns out you don't even really need this one, but I'll put it in there. Okay, so what are we supposed to find? How do we know when we've answered the question? Okay, moment required to keep beam horizontal. Okay? Is that possible? It seems like it ought to be. Well, the next step is solution. Remember GFS A. So here's solution. Well, when you're doing a solution in statics, what do you always do first? You always do a free body diagram. So that's what I'm going to do first here. And there's really only one thing you can draw for a free body diagram, and that's the beam itself. Now, before I do this, I have to define a coordinate system. All right, so I'm going to do that like I pretty much always do. I've said this before, but in case you haven't caught this on some of the other uh, videos, I find it's helpful to use the same coordinate system every time. You don't have to, but when I use the same coordinate system every time, I make a lot fewer mistakes. I tend to mess up less often. Now, there are some times when you, when you don't want to use this coordinate system. If there's something at a funny angle, if I don't have a real good reason otherwise, I'll use this one. If I have a good reason not to use this one, I'll change it. Okay, so what do we have here? Leslie, we've got a force, possibly. I'll call that AX, and another one here. I'll call A, Y, all right? A in the X direction, A in the Y direction. I've assumed directions. I just assumed the positive directions. If it turns out I'm wrong, then A, Y, and A, X will just have a negative sign on them. So that's all right. And I've got 1,000 newtons here. Make sure I'm still in frame, okay? And I've got this moment here at the other end, okay? Moment about C. That's it. There's the free body diagram. Okay, so we've got a free body diagram. That's the first step here. So what's the next step? Write in equations of equilibrium. So I wish this was a shorter name. Equations of equilibrium. Remember, this thing is supposed to be static. It's not supposed to be moving. So the sum of all the forces and sum of all the moments have to be zero. Well, again, I can solve for all the vertical forces, set them to zero, and solve the moments, set them to zero, and that'll work. Do I care what AX and AY are? I don't really care. If I knew what they were, I wouldn't do anything with them. So let's do this. Let's sum, sum the moments about point A. Since there'll be no moment arm for AX and no moment arm for AY, there won't be any moment generated. We don't have to figure them out. The only thing we won't know is M. Well, that sounds to me like that's going to be one equation and one unknown. So let's, let's do that. We'll set the sum of the moments about, now it's point C, equals zero. All right? Well, let's, let's look at it here. I'm sorry about C about A. There. Talked myself out of it. There's the right, right answer. So I'm going to sum the moments about A here. A. 
I've only got one force acting at a distance, and that's right here, and that's acting at a half a meter, 500 millimeters. So 0 0.5 meters times 1,000 newtons. Now, is that going to be positive or negative? Well, let's see. I've got this point here, and I've got the force acting about it. So the force is going to make a, uh, or the, the moment is going to make the beam want to move uh, clockwise. I've got counterclockwise being positive, so that means this has to be a negative moment. So that's what I'm going to do here. Now, right here, what do I do about that? Well, that's just a moment. It's not a force times a distance. It's just a moment. So I get to add that in here just like this. All right? It's constant about the beam, along the beam, so I can just add that in. And that has to be zero. Well, this is particularly easy to solve, so my moment has to be 500 newton meters. All right? So it turns out that if I apply, let me get out of your way here, if I apply a moment of 500 newton meters at this right end, this beam will stay horizontal. Now, although I didn't solve for the vertical force, if I went ahead and solved for that, there's only two vertical forces, so AY clearly has to be 1,000 newtons, and AX is going to be zero. So there you go. This would work. All right, so I've gone G, F, S. The last thing I need to do is put the A in there. So I'm going to say answer, and I'm going to write... M equals 500 newton meters, and I'm going to draw a box around it. So there you go. Hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.